Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be looking at a contribution Age of Empires 2 has made to science, and specifically what it's helping scientists understand about combat between ants. Now, I'm not an ant scientist or myrmecologist if you want to get technical, though I have played a fair amount of sim ant in my day, so it's not like I'm starting from scratch. More in my wheelhouse, the study also makes reference to Lanchester Square Law, which I've covered in the past in a video on the channel, and is surprisingly the most viewed video on YouTube covering that topic. Of course, they also use the Age of Empires scenario editor in the study, which is why we're talking about it, and is the part I actually feel qualified to comment on. So, for lots of reasons, the study just seems right up my alley, and I appreciate the multiple people who sent it my way. Now, this paper was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which is actually a very well-respected peer-reviewed journal. So, Age of Empires really hit the big time on this one. The paper's title is Complex Battlefields Favor Strong Soldiers Over Large Armies in Social Animal Warfare, where according to the authors they used a computer-driven algorithm, which is the fanciest name I've heard for the AOE2 scenario editor in a while, concluding that they made a significant advance that's important for understanding the competitive balance among native and non-native invasive ant species. It sounds promising, so let's look at what they did and how Age of Empires 2 contributed to all of this. First though, to set up the context, we need to start by talking about two different ants in Australia. The first is the Australian meat ant, which despite its ferocious sounding name, unlike almost everything else in Australia, is not actually out to kill humans, and are really the good guys of the story. Or good gals, I should say, as worker and soldier ants are female. The meat ant is particularly large and native to Australia, playing an important role in the ecosystem spreading plant seeds among other things. The other ant we'll see is invasive, called the Argentine ant. These evil things are very tiny, with about 3% the mass of the Australian meat ant, but are incredibly aggressive in their expansion and form gigantic mega colonies with multiple queens and up to a trillion ants working together. Even among invasive species, they're considered one of the largest pests in the world, having established themselves everywhere from Africa to Europe, and without being too specific, all around the Pacific. Now, these two ants will readily fight each other in an ongoing ant war most people are completely unaware of, and scientists are interested in finding any edge that could be given to the native Australian species, or even just understand why it seems to be losing ground to this seemingly weaker enemy. Another important theoretical piece to this that naturally comes up is Lanchester's Laws. You may be familiar with the idea, but even if you haven't seen it written out explicitly, it models something you probably have already noticed, with most players picking it up intuitively, even if they don't know the specific math behind it. The idea is that a slight superiority of starting numbers out in the open tends to give a snowball effect and lead to a one-sided victory. For example, 20 knights against 15 doesn't end with 5 knights left over for the winning side, but more often 10 to 15 left over out of the 20. Using Lanchester's formula, the math predicts you should end with about 13 full strength units, or something roughly equivalent. Now, there are a few problems with applying Lanchester's square law directly like this to Age of Empires, and as one example, an assumption is that as each side sustains damage, they lose a proportional amount of their attack immediately, whereas in Age of Empires, a unit taking damage keeps attacking with its full strength. Plus, of course, there's pathing and overkill that comes into play as well. Altogether, this means rather than squaring, it tends to work better to use a number like 1.5 or 1.7 as the power, and that tends to line up better with the HP remaining that you see in practice. Now, if you take that same fight of 20 versus 15 into a more constrained space though, where the 20 knights can't use their greater numbers all at once, then you do get something more like the 5 units left over predicted by using a power of 1, which is referred to as Lanchester's Linear Law. Essentially, by constraining the fighting space, you take away the advantage for the side with greater numbers, and instead reward small numbers of high quality. Think where 300 Spartans and 700 Forgotten Thespians held back hundreds of thousands of Persians in a mountain pass. The whole idea in the ant study was to see if something similar could be applied to the Australian meat ant and the invasive Argentine ant, and to what degree humans flattening and clearing their habitat might be tilting the balance of power toward the weaker but more numerous invasive species by removing all of the Thermopylae-like choke points that would usually be favoring the individually stronger native ant species. This brings us though to the Age of Empires portion of the study, where the scientists wanted to go beyond the theoretical math of Lanchester's laws covered by so many scientists before, and instead demonstrate the effect they were looking for in a simulation. What they did first was a series of one-on-one -on -one duels, with Teutonic Knights representing our underdog heroes, the native Australian meat ants, and then two-handed swordsmen representing the smaller, invasive Argentine ants. 
Unfortunately, they didn't mention what upgrades or civilizations they used, but noted that an elite Teutonic Knight could be four, but not five two-handed swordsmen, which happens if you don't give any upgrades to either side. So I assume that's what they did, and so far so good. They then conclude from that that the Teutonic Knight is four and a half times stronger, which is equivalent to saying the two-handed swordsman is 22% as strong as an elite Teutonic Knight. Lanchester's laws can actually handle different army strengths in the calculation if you know the strength ratio of a soldier from each side. So you might say a two-handed swordsman is worth 0.22 Teutonic Knights, which is too many twos to handle. Now, while this is a tempting conclusion, and 99.9% .9 of people would probably conclude the exact same thing, as an A2 math crunching nerd, I immediately recognize a mistake here. It's not an obvious one, but if you think about it, Lanchester's square law is at work in these tests already, making the two-handed swordsmen appear much stronger in a group like this than they are individually, which is what the alpha coefficients in the formula are intended to represent, and even the authors themselves note in the paper. Instead, I think the proper way to find their strength ratio is to observe a one-on-one -on -one battle, where in this case it takes the elite Teutonic Knight 4 attacks to win, while it takes the two-handed swordsman 50, which considering they have the same attack rate makes the strength ratio 12.5, not 4.5. It doesn't actually change any of their conclusions, but makes some of their later numbers appear quite strange. At this point, they moved on to larger scale simulations in two arenas. The first is what they called a simple, or open battlefield, pitching nine elite Teutonic Knights against various size armies of two-handed swordsmen, then tracking casualties on both sides, not dissimilar to how I would run a test in my own videos. They then repeated the experiment with three narrow choke points of three Teutonic Knights each, and these photos you're seeing are directly from one of the authors who wrote a short article explaining what they did in less academic terms. The result was, as expected, Teutonic Knights did better in choke points after crunching the numbers, here in figure 1b, we have the results of the nine Teutonic Knights fighting against increasing numbers of swordsmen. The cyan part shows the open battlefield setup and red is in the choke point situation. The fact the red line is below the cyan one tells us the Teutonic Knights were taking fewer casualties when fighting in the choke point setup. Just like the Spartans, high quality low number units do well in choke points. Unfortunately, when they tried to calculate the exponent in the formula for each case, where we'd expect something a little less than 2 for Lanchester's square law in the open battlefield, and in the choke points, we'd expect something around 1, as Lanchester's linear law would apply, the numbers they get are very strange. This is simply because they assume the Teutonic Knight is 4.5 times stronger instead of the correct 12.5 times. Just to go a bit further, I tried picking a point close to each trend line so I could estimate what they would have gotten had they started with the right number, and had they used HP left instead of the number of units remaining, I think they would have been even closer to the theoretical values. None of this really impacted the conclusions though, and honestly props to them for trying to use an intuitive model like this, going as far as doing 10 trials with each setup, which would have taken hours of very boring data entry. What they take away from this though is based on the data, choke points objectively helped these stronger but outnumbered units in Age of Empires. So at this point, it was time to move on from the simulation and proof of concept to testing this with real ants in the lab. Remember, we have our Teutonic Knights, the large native Australian meat ant, and the two-handed, or maybe we should say six-handed swordsman, the small but numerous Argentine ants. Just like Teutonic Knights, the Australian meat ants won every time in single combat, Though when the scientists tried to repeat the Teutonic Knight against groups of two-handed swordsmen tests to find the strength ratio between them, they couldn't get them to fight in that situation for whatever reason. Having done a bit of lab work as an undergrad, I know from experience, sometimes that happens. I was in a group project once tasked with studying sea anemone behavior, which are carnivorous animals related to corals and jellyfish. In our experiment, we tried to show it would move toward nearby meat and found the only anemone in the world that apparently prefers carrots. That's just life when working in the lab. Getting back to the ant study though, next they set up a real life version of the Age of Empires arena test. One container had 20 Australian meat ants on one side with no obstructions, giving a simple open battlefield. A second container had strips of wood glued to create choke points, basically a mirror of what they had done in AoE 2. Instead of 9 Teutonic Knights though, they had 20 larger Australian meat ants fight various numbers of these smaller Argentine ants, up to 200 of them being outnumbered up to 10 to 1. The results were the larger Australian ants won every time, though naturally had greater losses when going up against more Argentine ants. Crucially though, they did in fact perform better with choke points, just like Teutonic Knights and what Lanchester's laws would predict. This figure here shows the number of Australian meat ant fatalities as they faced greater numbers of the smaller ants. The cyan line here represents the open setup, whereas the red represents what happens with choke points. 
Notice both lines trend up to the right, as you would expect more casualties against increasing numbers of enemy ants, but notice the red line is below the cyan one, meaning they took fewer casualties with the artificial choke points. The takeaway is they did successfully find that the complexity of the battlefield affected the interaction, favoring the larger ants in more complex battlefields with choke points as they were hoping for. With a statistically significant result like this on a study you probably spend hours on, this is when you typically go to the university pub to celebrate, or in this case, maybe play a LAN game of AOE2 that you bought on your university's budget. Now, admittedly, you might be thinking, so what's the point? Isn't this all just confirming Lanchester's laws, which have been around since 1916 and don't need more confirmation? Well, the scientists make a decent case for some application, and they're the experts on this, not me, so I'm inclined to believe them. Apparently, it's been noticed before that areas disturbed by humans tend to be associated with an increase in the abundance of non-native ants, and certainly there's lots of examples where humans may have incidentally created flatter battlefields for these ants, which are out there battling at this very moment. They suggest, based on these results, human activity could be propping up these smaller but more numerous invasive species in Australia and elsewhere, invasive ants which cost potentially billions of dollars in economic damage each year. Apparently, there's also a pattern that invasive ants tend to be smaller than the native ones they're replacing, which is in some ways counterintuitive, and understanding any factors contributing to that seems useful. The scientists also suggest adding more ground-level complexity or natural debris in areas that have both ants may tip the balance in favor towards the larger native species, giving a direct potential application. Of course, whether Age of Empires II was really necessary to reach this conclusion, I'm not totally sure. Certainly, the choice gave them more exposure than the study might have otherwise had, with various pop science articles written about it for the novelty aspect. If you want to check it out, the link is down below, and unlike many journals, this one makes everything publicly available for free without a subscription. That'll do it for this one though. I realize it was a very unusual video for the channel, and I appreciate those of you who stuck it out and indulged me on this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.